All right, so let's start with a review of a convex lens. It's thicker in the middle. And um, for this one, you can try to draw, calculate, and name. So this would be a good chance to review. So go ahead and pause the clip and give this a try. And when you're ready to check, you can hit play. All right, so we have our parallel ray, the center ray, and our object or our image will show up here. We could do the focal ray as well. Come down. And it should be real, inverted, enlarged. It's real because it's on the positive side where the refracted rays go. So the rays refract here as they go through and um, inverted and enlarged. So for our image distance, we should get 120 centimeters. And then for magnification, negative two, so twice as big and inverted. And then our height should be negative 30. All right, so let's go ahead and try concave. Concave is like this, and the focus is negative 15, and it's 10 centimeters from it. So go ahead and give this one a try, and um, go ahead and pause the clip, and give uh, you're going to draw, calculate, and name. And when you're ready to check, you can hit play to continue. Okay, so parallel ray, center ray, and then uh, they're both diverging. Trace them back. So virtual upright and reduced image. And for our calculation, we should get negative 6 centimeters, magnification of 0.6, and a height of 2.4 centimeters. All right, so now uh, we're going to practice here this one with an electroscope. We have a balloon, negatively charged balloon. We bring it uh, close to the pole of the electroscope. And we want to, uh, yeah, draw what happens. So go ahead and uh, pause the clip and draw what happens with an electroscope in this situation as you bring it close. And remember the most important thing here um, in this unit where we talked about how the atoms are fixed, the only thing that can move are electrons. So let's give this a try. And when you're ready to check, you can hit play. All right, so the electrons should run away. Come down to the bottom, leaving the top positively charged. And um, that means that if it's positively charged, it has a lack of electrons. And the, uh, yeah, the electrons disperse down to the bottom there. And um, let's say we actually touched it, right? Let's say we had the balloon and we actually touched it here. If we did, those atoms on the pole here will want to become neutral. So electrons will come off from the balloon onto the electroscope and then the whole thing will become negatively charged when you move, remove the balloon because now it has more electrons than it had before and um, it's good there okay so uh, with this one here flow of charge um, oh, no, yeah we already did that <laughs> you're good okay let's go ahead and find the force between these two charges and we have a uh, charge on the left hand side negative two coulombs the charge on the right hand side of four coulombs and we want to calculate the force between them so yeah go ahead and uh, pause the clip see if you can find in your equation sheet um, how to if you can remember how to do that and when you're ready to check you can hit play to continue okay so uh, force is kq1 q2 of r squared or d squared i think on your equation sheet and 1.5 meters between them. And so we should get 3.2 times 10 to the 10th Newtons. And the force is going to be to the left. If you remember with this, um, you leave the signs as just positive because, you know, the charge there could be whatever, you know. And so you want to find the force and then you look at the picture. And so this is the force on this is going to be to the left um, after you uh, work that out. Now, what happens if we bring the radius to three meters? So instead of working this all the way through again, go ahead and try the ratio where you look at the new over the old and see if you can calculate uh, you know, how many times less than the force will be, and then you can use that. So go ahead and pause the clip and give that a try, and when you're ready to check, you can hit play. All right, so K, Q1, Q2 over R squared, but it's twice the radius squared so three meters versus 1.5 meters the old situation kq1 q2 over r squared um, k's are the same q is the same q is the same we have one over two squared r squared and then over one over r squared r squareds are gone it's one fourth as strong 
So we take one fourth by this number and we should get 7.99 times 10 to the ninth newtons to the left. And um, that's good there. All right, so let's go ahead and do this here where we have, uh, we want to draw the electric fields between these two spheres. The sphere on the left is positively charged. The sphere on the right is negatively charged. And um, yeah, we want to find out or draw the field lines. So yeah, go ahead and um, pause the clip. And uh, remember how we draw these. We use a positive test charge to do that. So place some positive ch test charges around the, char or the, around the sphere on the left. And um, you can see where they go. So yeah, go ahead and pause the clip and give this a try when you're ready to check. You can play. All right, that one's going to go directly across. That one's going to swing up and around. That one's going to go over and around. That one will swing up and around. I want to go straight out. This one will come uh, straight in there. So, yeah, and then the thicker the lines are, remember, you know, the more lines that you have, the stronger the electric field. Let's try this one here where we place some charges around and we want to draw the field. So go ahead and pause the clip and uh, give this a try when you're ready to check. You can hit play. All right, so this one swings up and around. This one's coming up and around. This one goes up and around. So, yeah, uh, we've got that. And then finally, um, let's go ahead and try this. Now, let's place test charges around these two spheres. These two spheres are negatively charged, and we want to draw what the field looks like. So, yeah, go ahead and pause the clip and give this a try, and when you're ready to check, you can hit play. All right, so those will come straight in, those will go straight in, those will come around, those will come in. So they'll all come in, right, um, from the outside. All right, so on this one, uh, how many electrons per hour pa uh, flow past a point in a circuit if it bears 11.4 milliamps of direct current? Now, I went ahead and just changed this to um, how, how much uh, charge in an hour. So, yeah, I'll go ahead and pause the clip. You can try um, the uh, second part as well. And when you're ready to check, you can hit play to continue. All right, so the current, we need to get into amps. So we convert that to amps. We've got our time in seconds, and it'll be 41 coulombs passing through. And then if the electrons are moving north, the current, therefore, would be moving south. Remember, current is the flow of positive charge, even though really the electrons are going the other way. Now, some of the factors uh, that affect resistance is important to remember. Remember, the longer wires have more resistance because the electrons have a longer path to go through. Uh, the wider the wire is, the more room it has to go through, so the less resistance. Um, some materials are better conductors than others, and copper is much better than aluminum. And then temperature. The cooler the temperature, the less the atoms are moving around, the less chance those electrons are going to you know, bump into the other atoms and um, slow down. All right, let's try a basic Ohm's Law problem. So go ahead and pause the clip and uh, do this one when you're ready to check. You can hit play. Okay, so 2.67 amps, B equals IR. Pretty straightforward there. Um, let's go ahead and try this one here. Let's say we have two conductors. The one on the left is 6 ohms. The one on the right is 17 ohms because it's so long and skinny there. Um, and it's going to have more resistance. Go ahead and uh, compare those two with the current. All right, on the left, you should get uh, 2 amps. On the right, 0.71 amps. And obviously, less current on the right because there's more resistance there. And then uh, for this final one here, how much current flows through a 100-watt light bulb connected to a 120-volt DC power supply? And then what is the resistance? So use your equation sheet there to do that. Um, go ahead and pause the clip. And when you're ready to check, you can hit play. All right, so we should get 0.833 amps for the current, and 144 ohms will be the resistance.